What up boys and welcome back to yet another video. In this video I've done the Nomer a hundred times and this is the video where I show you guys how I farm it, what to look out for and then we take a look at my total amount of gold made from running this dungeon a hundred times and get a calculated gold per hour, right? Before we dive into the specific though, big thank you to all of the support on the 0 to 10 million gold guide. If you don't have it already, you can get it for 50% off using the discount code DRAGONFLIGHT by using the link in the description. This is a gold guide that I've been making for over three years now, and the best thing about it is the fact that it gets constantly updated for free. So whenever there's a new patch or even a brand new expansion for WoW, I update the same book and I send that updated version to your mail for free. So make sure to check that out with the link down below in the description. Now, firstly, as I said, I want to show you guys how I run Nomer. And... Uh, I'm not looting when I'm doing this test run, like when I'm showing you guys the route, but keep in mind that I always loot whenever I kill mobs. Like I kill a mob, loot the mob, and then I move on. So it, it, the mail or the items won't be sent to your mailbox. There's a lot of confusion around that. The only loot that gets sent to your mailbox is whenever you kill a boss. Then uh, all the loot from the boss will be sent to your mailbox, but... Whenever all of these mobs that I'm killing, the trash mobs, won't be sent to your uh, your mailbox. First thing of importance is when you reach uh, this area right here, this chest will always be up. Sometimes it's a locked chest, and sometimes it's going to be uh, an unlocked chest like right now. But it has a 100% chance of, of spawning, so I always loot that chest before I jump further down. Make sure to kill all of these mobs. Uh, one uh, pro tip on these is you don't need to, uh, you can kill the mobs like up here on this uh, this level and then you can AOE loot like all the mobs downstairs as well. So uh, it's a lot faster to just run either upstairs or downstairs and just kill the mobs with ranged abilities and AOE loot all of them. And next up on this one, this uh, this guy right here, the Peacekeeper mob, you want to make sure to kill all of those because they can drop one of the new shields that was uh, re-implemented in patch 10.17. So I always kill those because usually or previously I would go right up this ramp and kill uh, the boss. But now this patrolling Peacekeeper might be at the other end right here. So you do have plenty of time to go all the way over and kill this pack as well. And then just run back to the boss. And it's also not necessary to kill the boss. You can also jump down. Uh, but if you struggle with taking a lot of fall damage, you can pick up the parachute right here. So when you jump down to the next level, you can pop the parachute to uh, reduce your fall damage. But not a, not a big issue for most people, that one right there. And then we just keep on killing. Make sure to uh, kill all of these Dark Iron Agents because they also drop uh, a, specific, a specific white item only uh, that only the Dark Iron Dwarfs can drop. So you want to make sure to kill and loot all the Dark Iron Agents. It's very important to kill this boss down here because as you can see in the bottom right corner of my screen right now, he drops a shit ton of different schematics. And these schematics can be very expensive. So he doesn't always drop schematics. In fact, he rarely drops them. And when he does drop them, he can drop some of the ones that aren't that valuable. But there's a lot of them that have a really good value. So make sure to kill him. Uh, run upstairs, kill more of these Dark Iron Agents. If you're really fast, you can also go to this other side and kill those Dark Iron Agents as well. There's a lot of people who don't like Nomer because there's so many ways that you can go. It seems like a maze. But once you have it down and you found the route uh, that you like, it's... Uh, it's a really fun dungeon, because that brings me over to the next topic that we're going to talk about, like, why would you farm Nomer? We already talked about some of the items that you can get, the new shield being brought back to the game, you have the uh, the the chest from the Dark Iron Dwarves, you have the schematics from that boss, but more importantly, and what is going to be the biggest gold maker in this dungeon, is all the blue items that are specific to the dungeon. There's a bunch of items that drops only in Nomer. They have a unique uh, appearance, which means that there's no other item in the game with the same appearance. 
So that makes the dungeon really good, because the world that dropped blues and the world dropped greens from Nomer is really bad. Uh, at this, like, no epics either, so it's really those Nomer blues. This chest right here can be either on this side, or, like, it's always going to be in one of these pockets, right? But it's a 100% it's chance. If it's not up in this one right here, it's always going to be up in this one. So that's another 100% chance of a, a chest spawn. So make sure to grab those two chests at least. And then I usually uh, run out to the launch bay area right here because it has a, a decent amount of mobs. Uh, like the density is quite all right on this one. And after uh, running... Uh, like doing this circle, killing these mobs, looting them up, making sure to get the uh, the peacekeepers. I teleport out. But a cool thing about Nomer is that there is an exit, like a, a second entrance for Nomer, uh, an exit point. So if you do it on a tune that doesn't have an ability to teleport out, you can easily just exit through that way. You can see it right here on the map. So instead of going to the launch bay, you just walk out this way, which is not a bad alternative because there is a lot of mobs here as well. So you're killing mobs as you're walking down. So it is quite efficient to take this way out as well. Um, and you also have time to clear the launch bay and then walk back and run out if you do it on the speed to it. It's no biggie whatsoever. Uh, and then once you walk out of the dungeon, you can reset the dungeon, walk back in, and you're actually going to be at the... Um, not the side entrance, but you're going to be at the main entrance again. So, really nice dungeon to farm, feels smooth. But yes, I am fully aware that a lot of people hate it. But now, the important part, how much gold did I make? Just kind of enter the shit items that I just picked up. So, this is the chest that I was referring to that drops from the, uh, the Dark Iron Ambassador mobs. The Dark Iron Letter. The chest is popular because... Uh, like, it, it's used for erotic roleplays in Goldshire, for instance. A friend told me. I wouldn't know anything about that. But they drop quite frequently. But they have a really good sell rate right now at 2,000 gold. It's a really good value as well. I mean, that's like 50,000 gold in uh, Dark Iron Letter chests. So not bad. This is the new shield from Nomer. The TechBot CPU shell that drops from those uh, TechBot mobs in the Nomer. Now, it does have some uh, shared appearances, but uh, there's, uh, it, it's still worth to put this up on the auction house, especially now early on when it just came back to the game. All of these items right here are just like basic green items that are unique. There's a lot of them. Some of them have an okay enough value to post on the auction house. I usually save them and then I wait until it's time, uh, until I'm like done with uh, the 100 runs to see what the recurrent value is because the value goes up and down like crazy. Like, I wouldn't be arsed, even though this is a unique item. It's six gold on the auction house. So that's just going to go to the vendor. But it, it's up to you. Like, they will sell just because of the fact that they are unique. So all collectors will eventually need these. Like, what they have in common is, you can see the sell rate on these items is absolutely insane. Really high sell rate on these items. So I always keep them and I uh, just take a look at the price when it's time to post them. If they have a low price, like 10 gold. Like if it's not a couple hundred gold at least like these, I will not be bothered trying to sell them. Other than that, these are the blue items that I got from Nomer. The uh, biggest items you can get is you can get the uh, the Mech Builder's Overall, which has the same drop rate and kind of feels like a Jinsu from Olderman. It's a really rare item, but it's not a super item. That has a market value of like 300,000 gold. You can also get the Trudgers and the Hotshot Pilot Gloves, which are super items in Olderman. Really hard to get, like super hard to get. Didn't get any of those, though. But I got a bunch of the weapons. I got double power hammer right here. Bad price of my realm. Don't look at that. I play on a full pop. I got double supercharged battle axe. Once again, not the best price of my realm. The Gizmotron Mega Chopper right here. I got four of those. It's a decent weapon. My price is below the reach in sales average, though. So that's really bad. This weapon right here is quite all right. It's the Vibroblade. Also a unique item. Uh, then I got double gun, the high-tech super gun. And I got myself one pair of petrol spill leggings. When it comes to patterns, plans, schematics, uh, you know, everything else, uh, I got the uh, this uh, discombulator ray from that boss. I got myself the flash bomb from the boss. 
and I got myself a Shadow Hood, which is a world drop item, but it's a, it's a decent one. I also got the Gnomish cloaking device from the boss, and uh, I got this Guardian Belt pattern, which is a world drop. This strong anti-venom has a decent sell rate. Uh, it's uh, also uh, a world drop, so I saved that one too. So if we then take a look at the total gold made, I have the add-on called uh, Bag Appraiser, which uses TSM to appraise everything in your bags. And you can see uh, I've set this add-on to be the actual price of my full pop realm, like the minimum buyouts. So if I were to post everything that I have in my bags in the auction house right now, it would have a total value of 744,000 golds. In 10 runs, that's 74,000 gold uh, an hour. Keep in mind that 340 of that is from the uh, TechBot CPU shells. Now, if you think that my price, my realm has high prices, definitely not the case. If I switch this one over to uh, the region market value, the average price across every realm in EU, it is almost 2.7 million gold in my bags because everything is higher, like the average price across the entire EU is a higher price than what it is on my full pop realm with the uh, shitty values. Anyways, though, that was pretty much it for uh, loot from 100 Noma runs. And if you guys got any suggestions on uh, what I should farm uh, next, which dungeon, open world farm, whatever, let me know down below in the comment section. Subscribe if you found this video um, entertaining, and I will see you all back in at tomorrow's video. But until then, bye-bye.